we have a really strong research department that we have scientists, genetic counselors, and physicians that are all working together to try to find the most relevant information to share with the public. And we're very lucky at Ambry because we've been doing inherited cancer panels for over two years and we've amassed quite a bit of data. And our research team started to notice that we're identifying mutations in some genes a lot more often than we ever thought we would be particularly a mutation in a gene called P53. So our research team got together and went through all of the panel patients, so everybody who's had multi-gene testing in the last two years, and determined who tested positive for a mutation in P53, and what did their family history look like? What did their personal history look like? They were really trying to figure out, were these the patients that would have been getting P53 testing anyways, because they had that type of family history, or were these patients that presented with a different kind of family history? The reason that's so important is if this mutation is more common than we thought, we need to be testing more individuals for it. And we want physicians and genetic counselors to know that including P53 up front might be a good choice for their patients, and it's a lot more common than we thought, and they're gonna be able to identify more patients and help more families with this information. So mutations in P53 cause a disease called Lee-Fraumeni syndrome. And traditionally, we thought individuals with Lee-Fraumeni syndrome had increased risks for childhood cancers, like a specific type of cancer called adrenal cortical carcinoma, or other types of cancers like leukemias, or brain cancers, sarcomas. And so we usually thought P53 patients, these patients with Lee-Fraumeni syndrome, had so many cancer diagnoses, they would be easy to identify, and we didn't really offer testing to individuals with something like an early onset breast cancer diagnosis because we really didn't think they had the disease. Uh, and people with Lee Fraumini typically have about a 50% risk of breast cancer throughout their life. Many times it's early, like under age 35 or under age 45, but they also have up to a 93% risk of developing any malignancy. So the cancer risks are really high, uh, and these people with Lee Fraumini syndrome require additional management and screening uh, to make sure we're able to identify any cancer we can as early as possible. So criteria suggest that we look at a population that was diagnosed with breast cancer under the age of 35 to see if they have P53 mutations. But at Ambry, we started to look at our database and the people we've tested for P53 and determine how many of those were actually diagnosed after the age of 35 or those that wouldn't make the usual guidelines or wouldn't meet the usual criteria. So we actually found that P53 mutations are more common than we had ever thought. Out of all the patients that we tested on multi-gene panels, we found P53 mutations in one out of every 282 individuals. And usually we thought these were really rare, so we were surprised to see this. And then when we took a closer look, we saw that in about a third of these patients, they were actually all diagnosed over the age of 35 instead of under the age of 35. That means a couple different things for a patient and a patient's family. One, if you're doing multi-gene testing and you're looking at more genes than just one or two at a time, you're able to increase the likelihood of finding something compared to when you're just testing for a specific gene mutation based on a diagnosis or based on a family history. So we're really increasing the likelihood of finding something that's going to matter for the patient and the family. And what I mean by matter is tell us what potentially we should do for treatment, what we should do for screening for future cancer risks. And we can also test family members to see who also has this mutation and is concerned about cancer risks, and then who doesn't have the mutation and who doesn't have that same increased risk of cancer. This poster puts together information showing the world that P53 mutations are more common than we had ever thought. So that means patients need to have P53 testing ordered in some way in order to identify these people. At Ambry, we have P53 on many of our multi-gene panels that are targeted for cancers. And so we're able to find patients with these mutations detected on these panels. And we really weren't able to do that before the invention of the panels and the inclusion of P53. P53 is a difficult gene mutation to screen for. Uh, some of the cancers associated with Lee Fraumeni syndrome we can't prevent, like a sarcoma or a brain cancer. But there are cancers associated with Lee Fraumeni that we can prevent and that we can screen for. So individuals with Lee Fraumeni syndrome have an increased risk to develop breast cancer. So we can talk about MRI or mammography to help find a cancer early 
or we can talk about a prophylactic mastectomy, a preventative surgery to remove the breast tissue and prevent the individual from developing the disease. Um, another thing that we know with P53 is that these individuals are sensitive to radiation. So if you have a cancer diagnosis and we find out that you have a P53 mutation, we might not offer you radiation therapy. We might choose to do medications, chemotherapy, and surgery instead because we know that radiation can actually cause a second cancer to develop in some cases. In my mind, the biggest takeaway point on the poster is that we need to be looking at more than just the obvious gene mutation when we're doing a genetic test on someone. We need to be looking at a wider picture because the description of the presentation, so the characteristics we think are associated with these gene mutations, might not be the whole story. We're finding a lot more women diagnosed with breast cancer at age 40 or age 45 or even older that we would have never tested for P53 in the past. And so this poster suggests that we really need to look at P53 in a larger group of women with breast cancer in order to appropriately manage their care and appropriately inform their family members.